on our way to Cars and Coffee, but look how beautiful this storm is. That is really cool looking. Wow. Very cool. Hopefully we don't get rained out. We don't have any rain in the forecast. We get it's been sprinkling all the way. Anyway, we'll get there and do this 40,000 overview an hour. 200, almost 300 miles past it, but oh well. Same, same. Well, guys, here we are. We're at almost 4,300 miles. Check engine light is only on because I have a catless downpipe. I haven't had any other check engine lights for anything in 40,000 miles. This thing is holding up pretty dang well, honestly. Uh, about half of its life, it got ran on 93, and in a couple, couple months of straight E85, and now I've been on E50 for a while now, pretty much since we moved to Texas. Um, I haven't had any real issues. I had uh, a boost leak there for a little while uh, from a clamp that came loose. Because the car is so stiff with all of the Verkline suspension, you know, I, I swapped out the subframes, both subframes, all the arms, all the bushings. The only thing left in the suspension that's stock is the front sway bar and the rear upper shock mounts, and that is it. Uh, and they will both be swapped out for 034 motorsport bits or uh, eventually uh, they're on the list but uh even with you know all the bushings placed out for spherical bushings and and all that stuff the car rides pretty quietly um on small small bumps we get a little bit of like knocking from the suspension but nothing crazy like this car is held up the only thing that hasn't held up well is the front and the paint uh, we got quite a bit of paint chips on things the car's a little dirty like there's a nice spot there that's chipped uh the windshield has probably i don't know there's a good one there a good one there there's another one over there uh i think we got one uh, yeah up here uh, so the glass and the paint are probably the two biggest things or the only things that haven't really held up but i mean i've got no lights go out no no nothing so i mean really we're doing oil changes every four thousand or thirty five hundred to five thousand miles essentially uh we don't use the oe oil i use uh 10w40 i use uh mobile one euro uh, i put some like uh liquid molly Ceratec in there with it and uh filter every oil change and she's been great honestly uh Let's pop the hood. We'll show you the driver's seat. The driver's seat has gotten a little bit of wear. Uh, I only weigh 160 pounds. Like I do kind of slide out of the car sometimes. So you got like these kind of stress marks on this bolster. But I think everywhere else is fine. I don't really ever have a passenger. No one really ever sits in the back seat. I got a little, there's a little crease there from when the car seat is in the car, but really the car seat's never in the car. Um, here we got, I made a video for it, but I never posted it, but I hooked up wires under the seat to the Haldex. So when I hit this, this switch here and I keep it up under the seat, I hit that, it makes the car front wheel drive so I can do front wheel drive burnouts, get the tires warmed up for when we're doing uh, drag racing stuff. I swapped out the steering wheel because I hated the circle steering wheel. Uh, so we got this custom made with the airbag cover. We did uh, eBay Urus paddles. 
I love it. Um, we also did this shifter. Got my uh, old lady got that for me off AliExpress. They have a couple different ones. Like they changed this out for like a like a part. It says like and actually it doesn't say part. Was it reverse drive? You know all that stuff. Um, that's pretty much all I've done for the interiors. Shifter, sure paddles, uh, wheel, and that the little shifter guy. Oh, and the P3 gauge. Gotta love the P3 gauge. You can go through here and you can see. You know, your boost, battery, you got the shift light, intake temps, all that stuff, EGTs, AFRs, coolant, zero to 60. I keep it on boost. Pop the hood. Um, you know, in the back, we've changed a lot of things in the back. We did that. Everything's maxed in except for the diffuser, which is Rieger, uh, with the little bumper things down there i had to like cut them and make them work for this diffuser but you know we blacked those things out you know all, all the badges are are factory since it's a black dog optics but uh, yeah just done a couple small things on the outside to make it mine make it more you know we got that maxed in skirt there we got the maxed in lip and that's held up really really well everybody said it was gonna blow up it was gonna crack I've scraped this thing a bunch of times. There's some marks on it from scraping. It's kind of rough on the edges under it, but there's been many a times where I thought it would be busted and it hasn't. Uh, did I, when I installed it, I pulled the bumper off. I drilled extra holes, used bolts with, with big washers to help spread the load out when we're you know, doing 160 mile an hour pulls and stuff. And then of course under the hood, a little bit of magic under here. We got the blaze intake. We got all the different racing line things. We got the racing line under hose. You know, racing line, racing line. This is from an R8 racing line. Uh, 034 engine and transmission mounts for street sports. Uh, forged turbo blanket. We got the DVD2 downpipe. You can't really tell unless you're looking at yours, but all the grounding spots, I got rid of those and did a grounding kit from EQT. You repin it bring it back and it grounds out back here. Um, you know, the batteries in the back with these cars, with the APR discharge pipe. We got a Do 88 intercooler, uh, NGK spark plugs. What else is going on in here? I think that's about it. Not a whole lot going on to make good power. I mean, this car is almost a 10 second car. We're at a 1104 at 126.8. Is the fastest she's been and that's on the street. Um, with these tires. Uh, I got these tires thinking they were going to be better for dig racing and such, and they are not, unfortunately. These Continental Extreme Contact Sport, uh, I'm gonna make a video on these specifically, but they suck. Like, they suck, they suck. Uh, they're quiet, and they're maybe okay for like a 200 horsepower car, but for this application, they're not great. I'm gonna actually email Continental tonight, and I don't know but I hate them. They were a total waste of money and time. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we got the EQT coilovers on it as well. All the Verkline stuff you could get. The whole catalog is on the car. Subframes, arms, bushings, etc. We got the Titan TS5 wheels. There's no spacers on these. They look phenomenal. We also got the racing line uh, stud conversion. It was one of the first things I did. A little bit of rust on the hubs. The next big thing up is going to be brakes. I really want to get the racing line brakes. They have, they actually just came out with rear rotors that match the fronts, uh, and they're shave a ton of weight. More pistons. And these are two piston, but there's only two from one side, so you, they're still, you know, kind of crappy. Hopefully, I don't get in trouble for beating you. Uh, yeah, just I love this thing. And the coilovers really, really help the car. Like, just being this, well, it's a little bit higher than this, but just on racing line springs with the stock struts, after a while, they got real tired. They were not happy, especially with the Verkline stuff and having all the camber in the car at the time. They did not play well together, but uh, the EQT balance line coilovers with all the Verkline stuff, you know, we have no bump steer. The car, car rides, like, amazingly, and I... You know, I barely have any clicks on the struts right now. I ride around with, I think, two clicks positive and four clicks positive in, in the rear. And uh, 
it rides like a dream. Like, I, I freaking really love, <laughs> it really changed the car. And then also, uh, there for the longest, I ran the stock dog bone arm because the Verkline subframe changes out the puck. So I thought that that would, was a good, you know, combination. But I swapped it out for the APR pendulum mount and it dropped the vibration of the car significantly, like at idle with the AC on and all that stuff. So I, I was really, really happy when I did that mod. I, I so good. And then uh, JXB performance uh, drive shaft carrier bushing, uh, that, that improved things as well. Uh, like vibration drive drivetrain wise, you know, we're locked down pretty hard with the motor mounts and then all the subframe stuff that that stuff really helped uh, get those last little bit of uh, deflection out of the car I can't wait to see what it'll launch like on slicks someday I'm actually have them up on my computer right now trying to price them out a cheap set of wheels with those tires but it's still as cheap as you can go with a good tire you're looking at like 25 to 28 hundred dollars to have a second set of you know, dedicated drag wheels. It's just something I just don't want to pay for, you know? Especially when uh, multi-port injection and, uh, you know, other turbos are right around the corner. Not that we really need more power or anything, but those are something I'm going to obviously want in the future. So just to spend that money. And I don't do a whole lot of drag racing here anymore. I thought moving to Texas, there'd be all types of like, you know, dig nights, money type events on the street and there isn't <laughs> there's a lot of roll racing which i find to be rather boring honestly so i'm having to travel up to dallas and out to other parts of texas to do anything uh dig racing related for cash so we'll be up at uh the dallas track and on the first of june for streetcar takeover hopefully maybe win some money there we'll see but uh Maintenance wise, we're, we're just doing fluids, doing fluids earlier than what you should. I did my first trans flush at 2,500 and I didn't like it. So I'm gonna start doing them, or sorry, 25,000. So I'm gonna start doing them at 20,000. So here coming up at 45,000, I'll do the trans again. I just recently did all the diffs and the Haldex and everything looked good for their age. Uh, so we're just gonna keep doing those at those intervals, but uh, yeah, even I even have Racing Line makes uh, drain plugs for the engine oil, both diffs and the Haldex that are have magnets built into them. So it pulls, you know, those little itty bitty fine flakes of metal out for you. I think that's about about all I got to say. I mean, the car's been phenomenal, really. Uh, the only purchase I think that was dumb that I had got is this bar from Ultra Racing. I don't think it did a damn thing. Uh, I, there's no other company out there making any, and this was actually marketed for the 8V S3, but the one I had on my Mark 7 Golf R wasn't this brand, it was a different brand. I think it was Euro Code, and they had you were able to adjust it at either end to bring in preload, and that made a difference. But this bar is just static. It, it's not really doing a whole lot, so I don't know. I think that was a waste of money. I think that money, I spent on that, I should have bought a, a front sway bar, which I don't really want to drop the subframe again to do. But here, eventually, like I said, we'll do the 034 front sway bar. And when I order that, I'll probably order the rear uh, shock bushings as well for the, for the tops. But uh, I think brakes are going to be the next big purchase because we're, we're, our brake pads are getting low. I mean, we're at 40,000 and I raced the crap out of this car and these are still the stock pads. And I haven't done fluid on it yet, so that's definitely due to. We'll get some race fluid in there. Um, probably some type of Carbotech pads. And I already have lines. My, my old lady got me 034 brake lines two Christmases ago, and they've just been sitting waiting for me to do some type of brake mods. I was thinking about doing the 034 rotors and obviously their lines. And then they have a caliper extension that brings the caliper out a little bit. A little slightly bigger rotor. It shaves weight. Uh, they look better. They got the J-hooks. I still might do that, but I really want to do the Racing Line kit. The Racing Line Stage 3 brakes are just so insanely good looking, and they're much lighter. The biggest downside to these brakes is that those calipers weigh so freaking much, and shaving the weight from the caliper, and more specifically the rotor, that rotating mass um, 
the car will feel a lot peppier on its feet once you get rid of some of that rotating mass. So either way, we'll be shaving weight on the rotors, which is what matters the most. The caliper doesn't move, so it's not as big of a deal. But those brakes are like, I think the front brakes with the rear rotors is like $4,600 from Racing Line. It's kind of crazy, but I don't know. If you're really going to track the car, which I plan to do, or am doing, I guess, it's worth it. I don't know if it's worth it necessarily for autocross, but I would definitely get this car on the big track. If we can make it out to Coda well, at some point, <laughs> definitely going to do that. I don't want to do it in the heat of the summer. These cars, it's something else we got to look. So I'm surprised no one's making them yet, but there's no trans cooler on these cars. The 8V had them. The Golf R has them. There's no trans cooler. You have the auxiliary radiator on this side, and then this vent is closed, and there is no trans cooler. All you have is the that little heat exchanger here for it, and that's I don't think that's enough, personally. But we'll see. You might have to do like an oil cooler too at some point or something. But uh, I think that's that's all I got. We went over <laughs> just about everything I could think of. I'll put all the mods here at the end of the video and uh i guess i forgot to mention it but hopefully guys like the beginning clips with the airplanes and stuff the air show yesterday was pretty baller that uh mig 17 is amazing it's the first time i've ever seen it love that thing and if you guys don't know i'm an aircraft mechanic so i do love planes that's my occupation um uh, yeah i don't know i love this car excited to see what's what's coming up in the future with, with turbos and all that stuff. But what I really want to do is get a 10 second pass. Woo! As I sit, I just fell off the curb. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that's all I got. I'm gonna peep the, uh, my boy, Sean, it's not stock. Just about every part that I named today besides the Verkline stuff you can get from it's not stock.com. I don't think anybody else in the United States is carrying that Rieger diffuser. Uh, so that's definitely something to look for from them. And then yeah, I got like all this stuff from Sean, like a good amount of stuff from this car came from Sean. So hit them up if you need anything. And that's all I got. Thanks for watching guys. Any questions? If you guys want to see any videos on anything specifically, let me know. I'm happy to make them. Um, it's hard to make content with a two-year-old and working a lot and traveling for work and stuff, but doing what I can. Again, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys on the flip-flop.